Hey guys, welcome back to another Dragon Air Silent Gods video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at one of the bosses from the uh, for the Awakening of Spring of Iskaland, the event to get the legendary hero Eladia in Season 3. Before I get into that though, I do just want to say a huge thank you to Dragon Air Silent Gods for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in giving Dragon Air a try, please do click the link in my description or the pinned comment and get involved today. So, on live servers, this event actually goes live in just under a week's time. So on Friday, um, when the weekly reset happens, we'll be able to start to battle our way through these continental challenges each week. So three bosses in the first week, four in the second week, five in the third week, and then six in the fourth week before we go into the other world exploration. As well as that, we'll have some of the snowstorm dungeon events and a summon event where you can pick up some more of the uh, frost ore to be able to collect your legendary for 200 and um, so in this video i'm going to be going through the radiance boss on this video which is weak to ice damage just to run through the rewards though you get um one ice ore for 200,000 damage two ice ore for three million damage uh three ice ore for seven million damage four ice ore for 11 million damage and the top rewards is five ice ore for 22 million damage However, there is also a leaderboard for this boss, so you want to do as much damage as physically possible. It's not like in the other world where 22 million is the max you need to do, and then you can start to build out into other teams. You can only hit each boss once each week, and uh, the more damage you do, the higher you're going to score. And then eventually, you're obviously going to end up getting more rewards from the leaderboards, including a good amount of ice ore as well. So... Let's jump into the boss, we can have a look at it and uh, talk through the team that I'm going to be using in this one. So we've got here the Chaos Shadow for Radiance. First of all, it's passive skill, has a 50% chance of gaining one stack of Radiance Crystal when the monster deals damage with their skills. The next passive is immune to all control effects like we see on all bosses. Uh, another passive that whenever the hero uses his ultimate skill, it gains a stack of total damage bonus, which increases the damage by 200% uh, of the damage dealt for every stack. So this is the same on all of these bosses every single season. Every time they use their ultimate, it's gonna ramp up in damage and eventually it's going to kill you uh, unless you're able to survive the whole time. Um, obviously, see here the recommended accuracy is 270 and the boss does take 100% increased damage from cold damage. So you're gonna be wanting to use teams like Ice Blast or Frost teams against this. So. This is one example of a team I was trying out. So I had two DPS, I had Throwback as my tank, I then had Hexandra in there with um, uh, as for my healer and Vinyara to bring me some more attack down and some turn meter control. However, once I was testing this properly, I did notice that actually the boss is really easy and it doesn't hit very hard at all. So I'm going to change this team up a little bit and show you what is most likely the best way to do a large amount of damage on this boss, and that is simply using 4 DPS and Frobath. So bear with me two seconds, I'm just gonna quickly re-gear uh, re this team, and uh, then we'll jump into the run, and I'll show you how the boss works. Right, so in terms of builds on these heroes, I've not used anything kind of crazy. I've tried to not get like, insane damage stats, and um, as you can see, Frobath is built as just a general Fence beast with uh, a load of accuracy for his attack down, so he's made. I've made sure to get over the two hundred and seventy. He is wearing the uh, tundra set to reduce the damage he's taken by twenty five percent, and he's wearing the crown of the unclean. The reason for that is to allow him and Shinna to rotate the defense penalty to get maximum benefit of the uh, new mythical gloves. So Shinner is built with nearly 100% crit rate, uh, just under 200% crit damage, and not a very large amount of attack really. Um, but she does also have enough accuracy to place Witch's remains. Next up, we've got uh, Bledin, who is in a relatively basic build as well. He's actually got too much crit rate here, uh, not very much crit damage, and a decent-ish amount of attack. Artifact-wise, I've given him Eyeball of the Giant just because I was running out of damage options. We upgrade his skills as well, actually, while we're at it. There we go. And then we've got uh, Gurpin. So Gurpin is almost like a mini Beldel for the Ice Blast team. Uh, a lot of people would have used her in Season 2. As you can see, she's built with just under 80% crit rate, which is all she needs. A good amount of crit damage and a good amount of attack. Uh, once again, also her skills aren't done either, so we'll just quickly do those. There we go. 
and then we've got Beldel. So Beldel is built with not using her exclusive artifact. I know that some people may be lucky enough to have her. Um, however, it's quite rare that people will have her and her exclusive artifact. She's built with 100% crit rate, just over 150% crit damage, and then attack. Also wearing the Aerial Ruler set and the Precise Carnage Gauntlets to increase the damage when the defense penalty is up. So I haven't got skill timing set for this team at the moment, so we're going to quickly do those. So if we have a look here, so 19.1 seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to put both of these on a 20 second rotation so that they can alternate their defense penalties. And we'll do 12 seconds and we're going to do 24 seconds after for the defense penalty from um, our pro bath. So that is the only timings we need. We don't need to worry about anything else. Um, no, it's really not worth it. Um, we can do their openings on 13 seconds just to guarantee defense penalty is out but outside of that it's really not relevant aura wise we're using crit damage aura from Beldel and like I said you want to make sure everyone's stacked around for a he's a solo healer for this team and he does plenty of healing to get the job done so let's jump into the run and you'll see how the boss actually works um I just realized I didn't actually run through the skills so we'll do that while we while we actually go through the boss um so the boss has a battle skill which it uses twice per rotation, so the way that works is it generates an orb after a brief channeling, dealing radiant damage to the target. Each stack of radiant crystal the monster has generates an additional orb, so it's just going to deal damage to your tank. Um, so yeah, that, that's not really a problem at all for a battle tank that not with, uh, with no real issues. It will repeat that skill twice before the ultimate skill, where it casts a spell for 6 seconds during which a random enemy is attacked every 0.5 seconds with each attack dealing radiant damage. This is the only somewhat annoying part about this fight. It's, uh, it is possible for the same person to be hit repeatedly, which could see you lose somebody early. However, it's uh, relatively unlikely. You're getting constant healing from this team, so it's going to be quite hard to lose somebody until kind of the later stages. Um, and even that can be resolved by timing your attack down a little bit better if necessary and maybe swapping um, the second defense penalty artifact onto somebody like Bledin who uh, is capable of dealing, well, capable of applying it actually better than Fruabath. I just didn't want to build him with accuracy as well. I wanted to keep the damage build on my uh, all of my damage dealers where possible. So if we just leave this to play out, you'll see how insane the damage this does it's just over a minute in already and we're already at 35 million damage which is way over the minimum requirements um it is such an easy boss i think it's going to be the one that people look to farm the most in chaos shadows people want to build kind of probably three teams minimum for this boss maybe even four uh later on but for now you just want to build your absolute strongest team for this boss and that's gonna be or Ice Blast damage dealers with Throwbath as the tank to keep them alive. So I'm going to jump out, I'll let this run play through, and I'll be back at the end to talk about the results. And there we go, that was the last ultimate of this fight. As you can see, we did lose Bled in, but we did get a decrease uh, attack penalty re resist at the end. Um, but all in all, this, this team absolutely blows the boss out of the water, so 140 million there. Bear in mind, this is not fully optimised. I've gone for somewhat realistic builds compared to my account currently. Um, in the testing I've done just to see where I could be at but either way considering 22 million is the top reward on this boss this is basically a free pass to get um, those five ice ores as well as that it's a great opportunity to get yourself into a good place on the leaderboards um, so yeah that is really all for the team as you can see it's just a ton of damage from the damage dealers as well as uh, a ton of healing from Frobath and um, I guess you could use a similar kind of strategy with uh, using some of the freeze heroes so uh maybe somebody like uh usher would be what well, usha would be really good and um, with for about solo supporting her and uh obviously any other damage dealers you can throw into the mix and um, the other ice blast who i wasn't able to squeeze into this team was nord the rare he'd probably do a really good job as well um realistically you just want people who can pump out a load of damage or support the rest of the damage dealers and um, by giving them more ice crystals um but yeah, I, I absolutely love this team. It's definitely one I'm going to be building for the first week when that goes live. In fact, I've just finished leveling the uh, Ice Blast damage dealers on my account. 
um, who I hadn't used so far this season. So I'm really excited to get that all built, uh, all the gear, obviously all equipped on them ready, ready to uh, tackle this boss when it goes live. So that is all for this video today, guys. Obviously, please do let me know what teams you're using in the comments below when it goes live. Uh, but if you are interested in giving Dragon Arrow a try, please do remember to click the link in the description. And once again, just a huge thank you to Dragon Air for sponsoring this video. I'll see you in the next one.